Welcome to the mountain, y'all. Today, let's use our slope equation to find slope, y'all. Come on down the mountain. Thank you so much, Klaus, for introducing our lesson today. It is lesson two in our slope playlist. Today, we're going to be looking at the slope equation. So, let's get our skis and get to the lodge. Today, I will be able to use the slope equation to find the slope of a line. So last lesson, you were really able to look at the line on a graph and figure out what the slope was. Today, we're actually going to be using the equation for slope and sometimes leaving the graph back out the lodge when we go down our mountains today. So some review from last lesson, okay, just in case you missed it, but we always encourage you to start at lesson one. Our slope is the steepness of a line. And when we found our slope, we realized that, that it was a ratio between the rise and the run. And when you graph equivalent ratios, you end up with a straight line. So that's what we kind of reviewed yesterday. Um, and we're going to take a deeper dive into this today. Right, so yesterday we did a little bit like uh, uh, some questions like this, right? And we're going to start right here at 1, 0. And our next one that crossed over a perfect order pair would be 3, 1. So for every 1 that this line moves up, it's moving over 2. So we would say that our slope is 1, 2, 2, right? Or for every 1 it goes up, it's going over 2. Now, some of you might be wondering, what is this M? This M is the variable that most times you will use for slope. And the way I remember that is a mountains have slope. So M stands for slope. So what we're saying here is that the slope is one half, right? Or one going up for every two going over. Now, really what you're doing here is you're trying to find the difference between our ordered pairs, right? And so this ordered pair was 1, 0, right? That's our first one. And our second ordered pair was 3, 1. And if you look at what you are doing, right, we are finding the difference between our x's, right? The difference between our two x values was 2. And the difference between our y values was 1. So really kind of what you're doing when you look at this graph is you're finding the difference between the ordered pairs in the x value and in the y. Which leads us to our key thought today. If slope equals rise over run, then really you're finding the difference in your y, right? Because your y axis is the axis that you're rising on going up and down. And the difference in, in the x axis or your x ordered pairs. And so this uh, symbol right here is delta, right? So delta y basically just means the change or the difference in two different y values. So in, when you're looking at the rise, you're looking at the change in the y axis. And when you're looking at the run, you're looking at the change in the x axis, which makes sense because for every one that it goes up, it goes over two, right? Which is when you get the slope one half. Now, if you don't have the graph to look at, to find the change in y, to find the difference in y, we know the difference is an answer to a subtraction problem. So you can take your second ordered pair for y and subtract from that your first ordered pair in y. And to find the change in x, you could take your second ordered pair for x, right, and subtract that from your first ordered pair's x. And that's another way you can find the difference if you don't have a graph. So what you just found right here is your equation, your math equation to find slope. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or the change in y to the change in x. That's what we're finding right here. So this is our key thought today. We're going to be using this equation to solve some slope questions without a graph. But first, let's take a look at one on the graph so you can kind of visually see what we're talking about here, okay? So we know M stands for slope. Here's our slope equation. And if I do this just using the graph first so I can write it down to kind of check my work, I know that my line is descending, right? And so if I'm starting and going from left to right, I know right here, that this would be my next ordered pair. So my slope is for every one that it goes down, right? So negative one, it's going to go over one to the right. 
So my slope for this should be my slope is going to equal negative 1, right? That should be my slope looking at the graph. Now let's use our chart, I mean, sorry, our equation to help us solve this. My two ordered pairs are going to be negative 3, 3, right? That's this one. And this one is going to be 2, negative 2, right? And I want to find the difference in my two y values. So my two y values are going to be my second ordered pair, right? Because you got to shuffle on the cart before you climb up the steps. So here is my first one, right? And here's my second one. And so my second ordered pair for y was negative 2. So I'm going to be doing negative 2 minus 3, right? So I have negative 2 minus 3 over my second x one. My second uh, x ordered pair was 2. So 2 minus, and this would be negative 3. So 2 minus negative 3. So this is my slope equation, and now all we need to do is solve it. So when I solve out the y-ordered pair, negative 2 minus negative 3 would be negative 5. 2 minus negative 3, right? So two negatives make a positive, is going to be positive 5. And when I divide negative 5 divided by 5, I get negative 1, right? And so I get the same answer when I look at the graph if I use my slope equation properly. So that's kind of how you use it, and then we double-checked it with the graph. Let's take a look at an I do now, right? So now we don't have the graph, and it says find the slope of a line that passes through 9, 3, and 3, 2. So this is my first ordered pair. This is my second ordered pair. And so my slope equation is going to be the difference between my delta y, right, or my change in y, so y2 minus y1, and then my change in x, which is going to be x2 minus x1. And so my second y is 2, and my first y is 3. So I'm going to do 2 minus 3 over 3 minus 9, because that's my second order, right? So 3 minus 9. When I solve that, 2 minus 3 would be negative 1. 3 minus 9 would be negative 6. And so I know two negatives make a positive when you're dividing. So my slope will be 1, 6. So my slope for this line would be 1, 6. Okay, so you go ahead. If you're ready, pause the video and try this one. If not, you can do it with me, and that's okay. So now we want to find the slope of a line that passes through 47, negative 4, and 9340, right? And so this is going to be my ordered pair number one. This is going to be my ordered pair number two. And I know my equation to find slope is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, right? And so I know that y2 was 40. So I'm doing 40 minus negative 4 because y1 was negative 4 over 93 minus 47. When I solve this out, I know that two negatives make a positive, right? And so 40 plus 4 is 44. I know 93 minus 47, just to show a little bit of work, more on the floor, go next door, get 10 more, is 46. And so my slope is going to be 44, 46. But I can simplify that to 22 over 23. So my slope for the line that passes through those two points would be for every 22 it goes up, it's going over 23. So my slope would be 22, 23rd. Hopefully you've learned a little bit about how we can use our slope equation to help us find slope. Uh, we have really enjoyed having you watch this video uh, with our help from our friend Klaus. Please check us out on Instructed Beats Official and subscribe. Check out our slope song. You can follow us on Instagram at, at Instructed Beats. We appreciate you guys checking us out. Instructed Beats, out!